Welcome once again, everyone, to Mary's School of Prophecy. I'm your professor, William Tapley, also known as the Third Eagle of the Apocalypse and the co-prophet of these end times. And I will be continuing my study today on World War III and Armageddon. And what is the difference between those two? And what are we up against now at our current time? When will they occur? And yesterday we started talking about uh, the who, what, where, and when of these two wars. And I, we found out that uh, World War III is at the beginning of the tribulation, whereas Armageddon occurs at the end of the tribulation. And we discussed how the false prophets all over YouTube and everywhere confuse the two. And we don't have to do that. If we look at their characteristics, we can place every end times war in Scripture, either as Armageddon at the end of uh, the tribulation, or as World War III at the beginning of tribulation. And uh, I didn't prepare too well for it tonight, but I do have some more scriptures that we can look at. And I am uh, taking these programs mainly from uh, volume one of my series. Um, I think it's on page 274. There's a chart there of the two, three end times wars. Uh, Armageddon, Ezekiel 38, in World War III, and I, I showed in that particular article how Ezekiel 38 is describing Armageddon and not World War III. So we'll look at some more examples today. But before we do that, well, we should say the prayer first. Why don't we say the prayer? The Catholic Crusader sent me this chair, prayer to Our Lady of All Nations, and she seems to have become the patroness of this program. So let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, send now your Spirit over the earth. Let the Holy Spirit live in the hearts of all nations, that they may be preserved from degeneration, disaster, and war. May the Lady of all nations, the Blessed Virgin Mary, be our advocate. Amen. And please note that Mary is the Lady of nations, all nations, plural. She is not a globalist. So let's take a quick look at some of the chat until we get up to about five after to allow some of the students who are late to get in their seats. I probably ought to give them the merits, but we don't have to worry about that. Let's see the chat. We've already got a lot of chat here. Catholic Crusader leads off. He says, good afternoon, Professor T and remnant classmates. Mary's School of Prophecy motto, you must unseal before you can interpret. And Catholic Crusader says, I had a very interesting dream. Very early this morning, I was in a hotel lobby talking to other guests. I didn't know about end times prophecy. They were very eager and attentive listening. The guests were polite and asked lots of questions too. They wanted to know more about the end times future. Was this a possible future teaching refuge sign for me? Maybe a true dream. I definitely think so. It was Catholic Crusader. In fact, not only are you my graduate assistant, but uh, you you are certainly a, a very fast learner, and you're very supportive in helping me out. As you know, I call myself the third eagle of the apocalypse, but the end times is always in fours. Four is a very important number, and I've always thought that there might be a fourth eagle, so don't be surprised if maybe you're the fourth eagle Catholic Crusader. You may not be. I don't know. The Lord didn't tell me I was the third eagle, by the way. He's, I just asked him who is the eagle of the apocalypse, and he said, you are. And I've told you that story before. So I did research, and I discovered that St. Vincent Far Farrar is the first to have fulfilled the role of the eagle, crying, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. And he flew through the air, literally. Now, um, in my uh, position, I don't fly through the air literally. I fly through the air electronically. So there is a difference there. So, um, but as I say, there was also uh, a saint that followed um, St. Vincent Ferrar, and I forgot his name. I think he called himself the Angel of the Apocalypse, but that's over the years. Angel got in there instead of Eagle, I'm sure, their, their job, by the way, was to save Europe from uh, the breakup of Christianity, and they partially succeeded and they partially failed, as we know. 
they prevented uh, the breakup in the southern part of Europe, in Spain, Portugal, Italy, and so on. St. Vincent, Vincent Farrar preached all over those countries. So, uh, but certainly in these end times, it's a completely different situation. I don't have any of those miraculous gifts that those uh, saints had, but in a way, of course, the internet is miraculous. At least I consider it miraculous. So I think it was. I think the Lord is telling you something, Catholic Crusader. Sister Renee says, oh, it's seven after. I guess I better, uh, I'll save Sister Renee until after. Uh, until after we go over. I want to review a little bit about the, um, but we went, we went over yesterday, and that means that we, well, take a look first at Jacinta, because Jacinta said, there's a secret of heaven and a secret of earth. And the latter is terrifying. And she was talking about these two wars. The secret of earth would be uh, World War III. The secret of heaven is Armageddon. And the reason the secret of earth is terrifying is because the good will die along with the bad. In the secret of heaven at Armageddon, uh, Jesus will remove all the evil. So we should pray for Lord Jesus to come quickly, and we should pray that we prevent or mitigate World War III. And we saw yesterday where we have already lessened World War III to a degree by preventing the last king of the South, who was Obama, from provoking the last king of the North, who was Putin, into World War III. We have avoided that, but there are other expressions of World War III, as we found out yesterday. And now here is what Jesus said, and, we, and I mentioned this yesterday also. If I do not return, no flesh will be saved. So what does he mean by flesh being saved? He is talking about World War III. And he, when he returns at Armageddon, he will uh, put an end to World War III. That's his reason for returning. If I do not return, no flesh will be saved. Mankind will be nuking, nuking, nuking each other. God will let us, will, will let mankind try to rule himself. Mankind in his pride thinks that he can run the planet better than God can. And as usual, man is going to have to learn the hard way. So now, what did we look at yesterday also? We looked at um, Matthew 24, where Jesus talks about... Um, World War III as the beginning of sorrows, wars, and rumors of war. And in verse 8, all of these are the beginnings of sorrows. So we see that World War III comes at the beginning of the uh, tribulation, and Armageddon comes afterwards. And immediately after the tribulation of those, of those days, and in verse 30, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with much power and majesty. So we found out yesterday that um, World War III is nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, mankind against mankind, in other words. Whereas Armageddon is Jesus against all of the evil rulers of the world. So let me see where we were up to yesterday. Oh yeah, I gave the example of the King of the South versus the North. I don't have to review that. And I mentioned that that's Obama versus Putin. And I don't know, I think, did I do the ram and the goat, uh, Daniel chapter 8, and when he was come against near the ram, this is the goat. The goat represents communism. The ram represents capitalism. He was engaged against him and struck the ram and broke his two horns. The two horns on the goat, on the ram, excuse me, symbolize Britain and America. Remember, one of the horns is newer and larger than the other. And the ram that is the West, the decadent West, could not withstand him. And when he had cast him down on the ground, he stamped down on him, and none could deliver the ram out of his hand. And this is the same as the scarlet beast burning the whore of Babylon with fire in one hour. The scarlet beast represents communism. The whore of Babylon is the decadent West, as I have mentioned many, many times on here. And hopefully we can mitigate this disaster. So now, where are we up to? We are up there. Oh, remember I mentioned Daniel 10. No, that's not right. That's not even supposed to be here, that slide. I 
think did I go over Ezekiel 38? Yes, this is what, this Ezekiel is not man against man. This is where God says, "Behold, I come against the O Gog." Gog is the Antichrist, and of course, God is Jesus. And in Matthew 24, we this we see the same thing. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man, Jesus, coming on the clouds of heaven, with much power and majesty. I didn't realize I had covered this much yesterday. So now, did we do seven chapter 17, verse 12? Okay, I don't think we did this one. This is, uh, uh, this is, uh, we can make a, make a, describe, we can uh, figure out which war is this about if we look at the, the descriptions of it. I don't think we did this one. Let's let's do this. And the ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but these shall receive power as kings one hour after the beast. These shall have one design, and their strength and power they shall deliver to the beast. The beast is the Antichrist, and the ten kings are the ten kings of the Antichrist. These shall fight with the Lamb. So that tells us this is Armageddon. The Lamb is Jesus, and he is fighting against all the ten kings. Ten is a a number which uh, is a number which symbolizes all. It's a number of completion. So all the kings of the world will fight against Jesus at the battle of Armageddon. These shall fight with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, because he is Lord of Lords and kings of King of Kings. And they that are with him are called elect and faithful. So now, so now who are the called, the elect? and the faithful. These are the three armies who are with Jesus at the Battle of Armageddon. And I've mentioned before, the term rapture is a recent one. It's a Protestant term, and a lot of people, Catholics, reject the rapture because the word rapture is not in the Bible. St. John refers to the rapture as the called in, in this passage. In some places, he refers to them as the purchased. They are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. So John says here that the three armies who are with Jesus are called elect and faithful. The elect are the protected Catholics. And John calls them elect, just the same as Isaiah and Micah. And I believe Jeremiah refers to the Catholics as elect. That's, that's the end times code word for the remnant Catholic Church. And the, uh, the called elect of the faithful are the holy martyrs. Those are the three armies with Jesus at Armageddon. It's interesting that um, the converted Jews are not at the Battle of Armageddon, even though they reign with Jesus during the millennium. They don't have to be converted, in other words, until after Jesus returns. What they have to be converted to, as I've been saying on here for quite a while now, they have to be converted to Judaism. They don't have to be converted to Christianity. So now, let's see, did I do 16? Okay, well, this is the same, same. He's saying the same thing. This is uh, Jesus. This is the location for Armageddon. And he shall call them together into a place which in Hebrew is called Armageddon. In other words, in other words Armageddon is in Israel. We'll find that World War III is not in Israel. Well, it's partially in Israel, but it's in many other places as well. Armageddon takes place in Israel. Now, did I look at 17? Oh, yes, okay. I'm again. Okay, now let's look at the... Uh, I haven't really... I should study these slides better before I post them. And this is Ezekiel 38. And we also see that uh, Armageddon... Ezekiel 38 is Armageddon, not World War Three. And it shall come to pass in that day, in the day of the coming of Gog... That's the Antichrist upon the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my indignation shall come up in my wrath, and I have spoken in my zeal and in the fire of my anger, that in that day there shall be a great commotion upon the land of Israel. Now, the first part of Ezekiel, before in 38, it does refer to the Antichrist attacking Israel in World War III. So the forces of the Antichrist, that is the deep state, will come against Netanyahu, for example. So uh, maybe if you, maybe
maybe the false prophets have something going for them as far as the first part of Ezekiel 38. But certainly by this time in Ezekiel 38, uh, this verse, Jesus is talking about his return when he will relieve the pressure on Israel from the Antichrist and all the rest of the world. And as he says, if he does not return, there will be no flesh left on earth. Uh, in Revelation, let's see, we just looked at the commotion in Israel. So now look at Revelation. We'll see where Jesus returns at Armageddon. And I beheld, and this is John speaking, and lo, a lamb stood upon Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having his name and the name of his father written on their foreheads. And of course, we all know that the lamb is Jesus Christ. Now, this is one of the armies who are with Jesus, and that would be the holy martyrs. And we'll see that there is another army mentioned here, but they're still dawdling around in heaven. And these are the ratchet Protestants. <laughs> they're having too good a time at the marriage feast of the Lamb, and they are going to be late to the Battle of Armageddon. Not by a lot, but they are up there having a high old time playing all their musical instruments. So let's read the rest of that verse. Revelation 14, verse 1. And I heard a voice from heaven as the noise, a noise of many waters, and as the voice of great thunder. And the voice which I heard was the voice of harpers harping on their hearts, harps. And they sung as it were a new canticle. Some Bibles say song. They sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the ancients. And no man could sing the song or say the canticle, but those 144,000 who were purchased from earth. And as I told you before, John uses the term purchased uh, or called for the rapture. Now it's interesting that there are two different groups of 144,000 in this passage. The false prophets will tell you that each time John mentions 144,000, he's talking about the same group, but he's not. And you can tell in this verse that he must be talking about two different groups because they're in two different locations. The ratchet Protestants are dawdling. They're at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Jesus has already left. He can't wait for them. He's taken the um, martyrs with him. But, of course, the raptured Protestants will soon join them. In fact, Jesus says he will soon also have the uh, Catholics, the elect, will also be with him also. And I don't think I have that verse here, so I'll repeat it. Jesus says that he um, will send his angels to gather uh, the elect from under the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Those are the three armies that are with Jesus. Under the four winds, the elect, those are the protected Catholics. I'm not sure how many of them there are. I've searched all through Scripture and I've never found them numbered. You could assume that there are 144,000 through extrapolation, and that could be. Or it could be that there's, there's a lot more of them. I think the, left, the number is left open so that we can pray that there is a great deal more. In other words, there will be many Protestants and many other denominations who we will hope to convert and join Jesus at the Battle of Armageddon. Maybe he won't have anybody to fight. Wouldn't that be great? In one end of heaven, as we find, are the raptured Protestants. In the other end of heaven are the holy martyrs. Those are the three armies that battle with Jesus at the Battle of Armageddon. Now, let me see. Is there any more? Oh, now we go to the uh, location of uh, the wars. We, one way we can tell, we can uh, distinguish between the two wars is their location. We know that uh, Armageddon is Jesus battling against the Antichrist. We know that World War III, it's nation against nation. But there is another way to distinguish the, between the two. World War III is upon waters, whereas, whereas uh, Armageddon is on the mountains of Israel, or in Israel, I should say, because actually it's also on the plains of Megiddo. So let's look at World War III in Revelation 17. And he said to me, the waters which you saw, where the harlot sits, are peoples and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these shall hate the harlot, and shall make her desolate, 
and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and shall burn her with fire. And that is World War Three. So it's located by many waters. World War Three will affect many different countries, peoples, nations, and tongues. That's one of the ways we can dis we can distinguish between World War Three and Armageddon. World War Three, as we just discovered, is on many different locations. And we find the same thing on Daniel 8, the ram versus the goat. Which war is this? Well, we, we know which war it is by the combatants, but we can also tell which war it is by the location. It's not in Israel. Daniel 8, verse 3, And I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, a ram stood before the water, having two high horns, one higher than the other, and growing up. And afterwards I saw the ram, which is the United States and Britain, pushing with his horns against the west and against the north and against the south, and no beast could withstand him, nor be delivered out of his hand, and he did according to his own will, and became great. And we see that same description in the book of Revelation, where the whore of Babylon, the harlot, controls the scarlet beast. In other words, the ram is preeminent. Of course, we will soon see that the goat defeats the ram. But as I say, it will be upon many waters. This is another way we can tell that the ram goat war is World War III. Now, I don't know if I have another slide or not. I guess that's the landslide. Okay, so, and if you want to follow this, and tomorrow I will try to continue looking at World War III and Armageddon. And I'm basically, basically going by the chart that you find on two, page 274 in volume one, uh, distinguishing between World War III and Armageddon, and what we are up against right now is World War III. These are, that's what the events in the Middle East are leading up to. They are not leading up to Armageddon. They are leading up to, as I say, World War III. Okay, now I think we can take a look at the chat and see what everyone else would like to talk about today. And I think we're up to Sister Renee. And she was talking to Catholic Crusader. Yes, Catholic. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you through this dream to let you know, as William has said, that you are one of his top students. Yes, my graduate assistant. And you will have a profound mission and educating those who come. The Lord has a beautiful way of instilling in us a desire to fulfill his holy will by allowing us to have passion about this or that or the other thing concerning his church. And I agree with Sister on that, Catholic Crusader. I think you do have a, a mission. Catholic, our Sister Renee says, without getting into the specifics, I was indeed called to fund, to found this new order to help recover the remnant church in these end times. Yes, I think all of us on this channel, all uh, the whole entire Mary School of Prophecy, the, the, our um, World Family Rosary Network, I think we are the remnant Catholics. We, we know the truth, for example, about Genesis 3.15. Not even the Catholic Church teaches the truth about that any longer. All of Christianity is under the great delusion of the end times. I don't think they're going to change. I think that uh, Daniel 2 is correct, that we are a stone being cut out from the mountain. The mountain is the Roman Catholic Church. We are the stone. And I don't. the Bible does not say we go back and join the mountain. We are separated and we are being cut without hands. That means that Jesus is guiding us. But we ourselves develop into a great mountain which covers the entire earth. So this schism, which we are seeing happening, it's painful, but it's real. And by the way, I, someone, uh, I, think, I think it was Sister Renee who uh, sent me a, a notice about uh, the remnant over in Munich, Germany. I guess they had a rally against the changes proposed in the Amazon Synod. And I haven't heard the outcome of that. But that was, uh, well, it was... Since they're five hours ahead of us, it, it would have been it would have been over with at least five hours ago. So, and I haven't heard anything. I, I I kept looking at the news. I couldn't see anything about that. So maybe some of you have heard about that. M. Jody says good evening, Professor T, and everyone ready for class. Okay, M. Jody, I sent your book out today, along with uh, Sister's card. Catholic. Crusader says, yes, Sister Renee, the amazing thing about this particular dream was very vivid. It really stuck in my mind even after I woke up. Well, I think that's a good sign, Catholic Crusader, that it's from the Lord. I've only had two or three vivid dreams like that. 90, 99.9% .9 of my dreams are just ordinary dreams. 
about the same as a dog. You ever see a dog dreaming and he starts running with his paws? It is comical to see a dog dream. And that's the way my dreams are. <laughs> but once in a while, well, I say once in a while, I think twice. And you have a vivid dream. And like you say, you remember it. You remember it very, so I think that was from the Lord. Leonard Darby says, good afternoon, Mary School of Prophecy. Uh, Sister Mary says, don't forget, M. Jody, to have the 5 by 7 picture of the real face of Jesus blessed by a priest. Frame it and a 5 by 7 and it will protect your home. And Deanna checks in, ready to learn about World War III and Armageddon. Sister Renee says, we call this more of a dream vision. The Holy Spirit can speak to your soul. You know, the Holy, the, remember, the sleep is the realm of the Holy Spirit. The, the, uh, our day is divided into three basic sections. Sleep, eight hours of sleep, eight hours of work, eight hours of recreation, which would include eating. And those reflect the Trinity. The sleep is the Holy Spirit. Work would be God the Father, and recreation would be God the Son. In fact, that's why I always pray before I go to sleep. I say a prayer to the Holy Spirit. And he doesn't usually give me a dream, but nonetheless, the, the dreams come from the Holy Spirit. Let's see. Uh, the Holy Spirit can speak to your soul and literally take your soul to a place in another dimension. It's more of an out-of-body experience. J.K.R. says, Sister Renee, what is the real picture of Christ? Well, I don't have it here. It's on my other set. I could show it to you. Let's see what Sister says. You can find it on the Internet. Uh, Sister says, what I have found is sometimes these visions are actually events that will happen in the future. They're prophetic, in other words. I think that very likely, Catholic Crusader. And you have the right name. Should I tell them your name? You have a prophetic name. Are actual events that will happen in the future because I have lived them out afterwards. No kidding. Sister Renee says, The picture is called The Real Face of Jesus was taken from the Shroud of Turin to a computer program that was intense and took years to do. And I think she'll probably tell us more about that. Kevin LeClerc is here. Kevin, I sent out your book today also. I sent out your book and also the address you wanted. Archbishop Vigano is, I believe, the real Petrus Romano. Well, maybe Petrus Romanus. We're looking for Petrus Romanus, the real, the real pope of the end times. Uh, it's uh, I've suggested that the, the Petrus Romanus is actually Peter, St. Peter, and that he will rule our remnant Catholic Church from heaven. But maybe you're right. I, I have never said that was ri uh, written in stone. J.K.R. says, thank you. Sister Renee says, so if you think of the Shroud of Turin as a negative, like we used to make pictures in the olden days, the real face of Jesus is the developed photograph from that negative. Catholic Crusader says, well, that's incredible, Sister Renee. It's rarely happened to me. Oh, yeah, about your dream. Well, Sister is pretty much of an expert on it, Catholic Crusader. Sister Renee says, Kevin, how was your test? Are you okay? That's right, Kevin, you told us you were having tests today. Or yesterday. Sister Renee says, if you surrender, Catholic Crusader, and trust the Lord, will give you more experiences. If you doubt, then rebuke. You won't. Oh, that's interesting. Peter Breen says, St. Teresa of Avila wrote, Our body has this defect, that the more it is provided care and comforts, the more needs and desires it finds. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Indiana says, William, can you compile a list of false prophets from YouTube? <laughs> Let's see here. I don't think most of us have the discernment that you have. Well, I've I've thought of doing that, but I don't know what's the value of that. I just say just say all of them are. Even people like Father Mitch Beck or Tim Staple, the Catholics, they they don't give you the truth either. Tim Stapleton says that footnote 351 of A. Morris Laetitia is continuing with the line of Pope John Paul II, and it isn't. 
he leads people astray with interpretations like that. And Father Mitch Backwood says it's he that crushes the head of the serpent. And these are Catholics. They should know better. Oh, boy. Kevin Leclerc says, Clerk says, After all, WFRN, for your prayers, the doctor did not do a scan. Oh, no. Huh. So, my chat just took off, people. Wait a minute. Hmm. Uh, that's what I should do. I should sing when the chat takes off and do a little entertaining while I'm scrolling back and back and back and back. Oh, here he is. The doctor said they were going to take a current scan. Oh, wait a minute. That's not where I am. Still going back. Still going back. Still going back. This is pathetic. <clears throat> Still scrolling back up. I've got to train myself. Either that, I've got to get a mouse that, that isn't the cheapest thing Walmart has. Okay, here. Kevin says, Thank you for all, thank you all, WFI, and for your prayers. The doctor did not do a scan, so. No news of anything for three more months. It was, it was a waste of four hours. Well, that's kind of too bad. You go all the way there and they don't do a scan. Well, maybe that's good news. Catholic Crusader says, Thanks so much, Sister Renee, for your glorious, wise advice. Thanks to the Holy Spirit. Big time. Praise God. Sister Renee says, Kevin, you'll be getting your picture of Jesus soon. Have it blessed and frame it. Then use the prayer card to Mother Teresa. I trust in her intercession. Okay, Kevin, I think you're getting these prayer cards just in time. I sent, sent it out today, so uh, Friday it went out, or sat, Saturday morning it went out. It takes usually three days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. You ought to get it, I would say, Tuesday or Wednesday. Maxula says, Catholic Crusader, that is a great dream. A hotel is a temporary place where you stay on a trip. And the guests are the people... You're going to help find the Lord. You will be a leader of people in a refuge. Oh, thanks for that interpretation, Maxwell. That's interesting that he had the, had his dream in a hotel. Like you say, that's a significant location. Carolyn Couch says, Kevin, that sounds like good news to me. The doctor must have felt there was no need to do a scan. Indiana says, Kevin, I understand your frustration because I recently had surgery to remove a tumor from my arm. It is normal in this day and age to get the runaround. <laughs> Everything revolves around commerce. I've done that. I've taken a long trip to the doctors and they just tell me. They tell me don't. Well, this was, I can tell, might as well tell you, it was about, uh, I had to, uh, oh, the prostate. My prostate had the, the, the uh, TSA, is that the number? The PSA. The PSA was high. And that indicates cancer. So I had to go all the way into Syracuse, which is 80 miles. And what happens? Somebody comes out and tells me, oh, you don't take that seriously. Don't take it seriously? And who was this person? I don't know. I don't know what the name of the person was. He wasn't a doctor. He didn't have a name tag on. I have no idea who it was. I was kind of thought that was pretty third rate. Anyway, I hope he's right. But like you say, I got the run around. Everything revolves around commerce. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> Indiana says, praying for you, Kevin. Kevin LeClerc says, thank you so much, Sister Renee. And he sends a whole bunch of roses. Patricia Arndt sends an apple. Kevin LeClerc says, true, Indiana. Patricia Arndt says, sorry to hear that, Kevin. Indiana says, Kevin, I love the Byzantine cross. Catholic Crusader says, Yes, Maxilla Preto, it was an incredible dream. Like Sister Renee mentioned earlier, it felt like it was close to an out-of-body experience. I'm going to pray to the Holy Spirit later. More on it. Well, as Sister Renee says, Catholic Crusader, if you, uh, if you open yourself up and accept it as from the Holy Spirit, you may get more information from the Holy Spirit. Sister Renee says, Catholic Crusader, please purchase the book, The Forty Dreams of St. Don Bosco, and learn how he was led 
in his mission through dreams and visions. I ought to get that myself. I don't have that. Is there any way I can read that on the, online without having to buy the book, says Renee? Probably not. Indiana says, The cross represents the, both the good thief and the bad thief in addition to Jesus. Joni says, Kevin, I hope you are okay. Glad you are on the chat. Catholic Crusader says, Continually praying for you, my brother in Christ, Kevin LeClerc. Uh, Catholic Crusader says, thank you very much, Sister Renee, will do. Maxula says, Catholic Crusader, please write all your dreams. That way you will know what the Lord wants for you to do. That's a good idea, um, Catholic Crusader. Maxula says to write the dream out so you don't forget it. I mean, right now it's it's fresh in your mind, and you can probably remember all the details, but maybe a month from now you'll, you'll say, gee, what happened in that dream? So I think she might be right to write it out. I sh I'm sure Sister Renee would agree with uh, us on that. Kevin LeClerc says, The doctor said they were going to take a current scan to check how much more they grew in the last three months. Carolyn, two and a half months, they now say. It's in our Lord's hands. Amen. Catholic Crusader says, Thanks, Max Lopreno. Good advice, too. Kevin LeClerc says, Thank you, Joni. To the Revolution says, praying for Kevin. To the Revolution says, praying also for Pope Benedict and Donald Trump. Yes, our leader and the leaders in these end times. And they are both not only under a lot of pressure, but their lives are in danger, both of them. The deep state, they are the number one targets of the deep state, no doubt about that. Kevin LeClerc says, thanks to the revolution. God bless you. Youngblood says, I feel like something is coming together. The queen now says that Harry and his wife will not get any public funds, nor have royal titles, and have to pay back taxpayer funds for the remodeling done, I think, on their home. Carolyn Couch says, Man, we don't, I have no idea what's going on there, but there, this must be some kind of conflict. Carolyn says, I'm confused. So you believe only some Christians are called to these refuges? The Bible tells us many people will suffer during the tribulation. The church must suffer just as Christ suffered. Most Christians will suffer. Most Christians have to go through the tribulation. Some will not. Jesus said it will be as in the days of Noah and as in the days of Lot. Noah was protected in a safe refuge in the ark. He, was, he survived the flood and his family. Lot had to flee to a refuge. He was saved from the rest of Adam, say, and Amor and Gay, which was burned with fire. So uh, only, only some people are going to be saved. This is the final test. It's like an exam. We're in a final exam. There's not going to be any more exams. This is it. <laughs> to make it into the millennium. Kevin says, thanks, CC. Fugue 96 says, yay, yay, can be here. Praying for all. Kevin, I take bitter apricot seeds as a preventative from tumors after defeating them in 2015. Also shrinking my dog's tumor as well. God bless you and everyone. Mm, never heard of that. I know they say vitamin D is good. I take vitamin D. My VA doctor has me doing that. And the reason is because we don't get much sunshine up here in the Northeast. The Northeast has the highest rate of cancer in the country because we have the least amount of sunshine. Sister May says, Harry and Meghan are running to fame, Hollywood glamour, and recognition. It will backfire on them, and they will be left with nothing. Mm, interesting possibility there, Sister Renee. I, personally, I admit I don't see what, what, they're getting gain, what they're gaining from this. Sister Renee says they're in the snare of the devil. The devil is the author of Bait and Switch. Yes, he will stab you right in the back. Every time, as soon as he's gotten as much as he can out of you, forget it. You're gone. He promises a lot, but he, in the end, the trade-off is not quite fair. Peter Perrine says, Maxula Preto, you are so right about writing stuff down. I don't go to confession without my notes. Oh yeah, that's interesting. I, 
I don't do that myself, but that's probably if you want to make a good, complete confession. Catholic Crusader says, We all need to pray to St. Peregrine for Kevin Leclerc. I think St. Peregrine is the saint that you pray for cancer, right? I think so. Youngblood says, To their home. That is 180 degrees from yesterday. Something evil this way comes. Now they are taking advice on the Obamas. Is this Harry and Meghan you're talking about? Uh, Kevin LeClerc says, so true, CC. Amen. To the revolution says, Meghan and Harry won't move to the U.S. while Trump is president. Need 10 more terms for Trump. <laughs> In a way, somebody, some said, some, somebody was saying he hopes that they do impeach Trump and remove him from office because then he can run for two more terms. <laughs> I think he might be able to, legally. Catholic Crusader says, Amen, brother. K.L. Sister Ray says, It is my understanding that the 144,000 who are raptured are actually those who will die during the tribulation. In other words, they will be taken in death. Is that correct? No, I don't believe so, Sister Ray. No. Uh, no, they, they go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. They are in one end of heaven. I don't believe they die. It's the martyrs who die. Sister Renee says, so maybe so being martyred and raptured are closer in definition, except the raptured will not suffer per Christ per se. Is that correct? I no, I don't think so, Sister Renee. No, I think the raptured, I don't they I think the raptured, when they come back during the millennium, they will live a normal life. Whereas the martyred will be um will be in a glorified body like Jesus. I think that's the difference between the two. I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe the raptured also die, but I don't think so. Carolyn Couch. Oh, I didn't. Sister Susan Summers checks in. Kevin says hi, Sister Susan. Amen. Kevin says I agree with the hundred forty-four thousand. Sister Anne. Sister Anne agrees with Kevin. Catholic Crusader says, Yes, Sister Renee, being martyred, you suffer in death, whether it's swift or slow. Raptured, you suffer no actual death. You're taken away while you're still alive. I believe that's right. Oops, well, there's my A student. He's disagreeing with his professor here. But I have to start listening to what Catholic Crusader says because he's got as many credentials as I have. He gets the dreams. <laughs> so... If you agree, Catholic Crusader, I am going to back off a little bit and look into it a little more. Josephine Vita Colonna says, I want to know. Kevin LeClerc says, Vigano came out in response to the remnant. Has anybody heard about the, the rally that they had in Munich? Uh, remnant video reported on it. Matt, what's his name, uh, reported on it this morning. Sister Renee sent me a link to the video. But I haven't heard what was the outcome. Fugue 96 says, Every day, Yesterday went back to work for the first time in many days, battling flu. I was falsely accused of something I didn't do. And I defended myself to a point and stopped offering up and had to forgive. Hmm. Well, sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you have to stand up for yourself. Don't, you know, don't have to apologize. I've done that myself. I worked at a plant for 26 years, and there's a lot of politics in a plant, and you have to learn to stand up for yourself. Alti says, Grandpa William, dry fruit is good for storage food. I guess so. There'd be a lot of sugar in it, though. M. Jody says, Thank you very much, Sister Renee. I will take it to the priest where I go to church and RCIA. Kathleen um, my chat took off. Wait a minute. Oh, goodness. Well, I'm going back to find my art where I was. Okay. Kathleen Christine De Valero says she's going to church. Saturday Night Mass, I presume. Catholic Crusader says, Yes, Professor Bill, you can absolutely tell my remnant Catholics my Old Testament first name. Do you still remember it? Laugh out loud. Yes, it's Daniel. A very good prophetic name. 
Doodle Noodle says, A rude awakening is a false prophet. Also, Paul Begley and Jimmy Aiken. I would say they're all false. None, are any of them telling you to pray the rosary? <laughs> they, to think, ask them what the Dan, David's five smooth pebbles represent against the Goliath. None of them have a clue. <laughs> Those five smooth pebbles represent Mary's rosary, the five decades. He only David only needed one pebble. Why did he take five? Catholic Crusader said, Doodle Noodle, nice to see you, brother. Doodle says, People who preach Christianity without the cross are false prophets. Beware of the prosperity gospel. Yes. Uh, I've always said that you can sum up all end times prophecy in one sentence. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And if the false prophets are teaching that, then they're true prophets. Sister Renee says, get back, get back to back to where you once belonged. You can sing that Beatles song when you're trying to find your way on the jet. <laughs> well, that's a good idea. <laughs> get back, get back, get back to where you once belonged. Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> Doodle says, hey, nice to see you too, Catholic Crusader. Peter Breen says, please sing the tune they played during Final Jeopardy when you are scrolling. Yeah, I could do that too. How does that song go? I don't watch it enough to remember it. Carolyn Count says, William, it was an angel at the doctor's office. Uh, are you talking to Kevin now? Who are you talking about? There was an angel? Oh, uh, you mean with me, with my case? No, I don't think it was an angel. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. He didn't have a name tag, and I know that. I said, I said to myself, who the heck are you? <laughs> no name tag. I traveled 80 miles, to didn't even see a doctor. Bruce Deal says, I had a dream. I was in a hotel looking for room 6616. Creepy room number. I was going down all these hallways and couldn't find it. Probably a good thing. Well, that would be an interesting dream. Doodle Noodle says, speaking of false prophets, the Beatles have a picture of Alistair Crowley on their album cover. Yep, one of their albums featured a lot of questionable people, and he's one of them. Sister May says, yes, they were trying to be cool and weird and freaky. They didn't mean anything as far as their faith. John Lennon loved Jesus. Really, I didn't know that. I didn't never heard that. Bruce Deal says, the room number was on a piece of paper. Soul 6616. That was the phone number. Huh, interesting, Bruce. M. Jody says, we'll be praying for you, Kevin. The following message is held for review, so let us just see. Catholic Crusader says, if you want to listen to a glorious Christian pick-me-up song, listen to the Curie by the 80s pop group, Mr. Mr. Hmm, never heard of that, Catholic Crusader, but... Now I take everything you say a lot more seriously since you had that dream. <laughs> so I'll have to look that up. Mr. Mr. Never heard of that. Curie. Hmm. Okay. I got written down. I hope I remember. John Lennon wrote the song. Oh, John Lennon wrote the song Imagine about there being no God. Yes, I always question that. It didn't sound very Christian to me. Sister Ray says, John Lennon said he was converted back to the church when he watched the TV movie Jesus of Nazareth in the 1980s. No, oh, I haven't followed them that much. Karen says, I used to watch a cooking show on TV, and I was taken in spirit and shown how they were worshiping the Pachamama. The women must have sensed me because she called me a Pachamama. That was three and H. Huh. Well, that sounds interesting, Karen. Hmm. Rosary Piper says, how much time between World War III and Armageddon Wars? Three and a half years? I would say about that, yes. But we can shorten the time. Karen says, and half a year ago. I don't watch this show anymore. And Doodle Noodle says, the Pachamama is a disgusting blasphemy against the Holy Virgin Mary. And that is the truth. And thanks to those brave Catholics who threw those idols into the Tiber River. 
And of course, Pope Francis fished them out. He had sent the police over to fish them out as soon as he could. <clears throat> Karen says the, the woman was nude at the waist, up at the speaking podium. You're talking about the Pachamamas, I hope. I hope, they were, I hope it wasn't a real woman. <clears throat> Peter Breen says, Sister Renee, there is a book called The London Prophecy by Joseph Nisgoda. I think you would find it interesting. Hmm, never heard of that. Sister, gives, Sister Renee gives a thumbs up. Fugue says, I have been in the throes of defending celibacy this past week. Does anyone have prophecy concerning our Lord or the Blessed Virgin Mary on the attack of celibacy? Well, yes, there's been quite a bit of discussion about St. Bridget's prophecy. Let me get this right. I haven't read it myself that the Pope who changes the rules on celibacy will suffer the fires of hell. That was a prophecy from St. Bridget. That's why Pope Francis is doing everything he can to have the support of the bishops. And that's why, he, he, of course, he claims that he's against optional celibacy. He claims that he's for celibacy for priests. So then when the bishop, when uh, Pope Benedict comes out with a book saying the exact same thing, the Vatican went bonkers. Because obviously, they know that Pope Francis does not really believe any of that. And he, and he doesn't. The whole purpose of the Amazon Synod was to bring in married priests and to do away with celibacy. Doodle Noodle says, Nudity, aggression, and dual-mindedness are all symptoms of Satan. Sister Renee says, Yes, Doodle, that would describe number one Hollywood. And the number to the Democrats. What, what number is that now? Doodle Noodle says, yes, sister. Well, I guess I can start singing my song now because the chat just took back. Get back. Get back to where you started from. Get back. <laughs> get back. Uh, let's see. Uh, Karen says, after the comment I made, my phone froze. Uh, we, I had trouble this morning, too. After I uh, after I got rid of that troll. The, the devil must not have liked that, because I immediately had trouble with the... Uh, I thought I wasn't going to be able to continue the chat. Janet Meyer says, praying for you, Fugue 96. False accusation is a serious sin. Patricia Arndt says, John Henry Weston in Munich told Cardinal Marx to repent. He is a wolf in the church and will have blood on his hands. Hmm. Bruce Deal says, Have you listened to Sister Mary Claire from Holy Faith Media? She gives a lot of spiritual comfort. No, I don't think I'm aware of her. Let's see. I'll write that down. Sister Mary Claire. Sister Mary Claire. Carolyn Couch says, talking to you about your visit. Laugh out loud. Catholic Crusader says, correct, Professor Bill. You get a selection of fruit today. <laughs> Good memory. Oh, yeah, I got your name right, didn't I? <laughs> well, I, it, I think it must have struck me at the time that you had a prophet's name, Daniel. <clears throat> Look at all the fruit he sent me. Fugue 96 says, Janet got your picks. Thank you. Yes, but our Lord was sinless. And falsely accused. By the way, deathly sick this week, so could not help at church on Wednesday. M. Jody says, the Jehovah Witnesses are false prophets and preach the kingdom as at, at hand, but they have another God and Jesus and a false kingdom. Well, that's a good point. I have to agree with that. Carolyn Couch says, those Beatles also sang the Revolution song. Imagine a world with no God, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's the imagine, I think. Hmm. But uh, Sister Mary says that John Lennon came back to the church after he wrote that song. Kevin LeClerc says, Vigano came out in Munich and gave the German cardinals whiplash. <laughs> 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 well, I still find, want to find out what happened at the, uh, at the rally. Uh, I'm sure if I go to Remnant Television, Matt will give a report on the rally. He said he would later today. I would think any time now he would give a report. 
Fugue says, I'm in the process of investigating the history of celibacy. And from what I understand, there were married clergy, but were under continence from the first century until 609 AD. Well, it would be a good idea to in investigate the history of celibacy. But Jesus said, let him who can do it, do it. So he was talking about celibacy, and of course he was celibate, so it's not like it's something that's brand new. Sister Renee says, one of the saddest things about the Jehovah Witnesses is they, is they do not believe in mercy. Once you sin, you're damned forever. That's what I understand. No such thing as confession. Well, they have a lot of weird beliefs, and I know because they're in my family too, as well as a lot of other denominations. I feel sorry for them. And they're nice people. The, one, the ones in my family are nice people, too. I, I don't like to go against what they... Because they, cause they, they get so hurt when you point out to them their errors. But I know it's my duty to correct them. Fugue says there's something just not right about dropping celibacy. A slippery slope. Some questioning celibacy in religious orders, monks and nuns. Yes, it is. This is, And I told you why they want to do it. It has nothing to do with getting more priests. It has to do with diluting the priesthood so that they can kick out the traditional priests and bring in people who were yesterday were deacons and today they're priests. That's what they want to do. Get back, get back, get back to where you started from. Get back, get back. Okay, uh, Karen Herrera. No, it was a real woman. She is still on TV today. No kidding. That is weird. Sister Susan Summer says, I am familiar with Sister Mary Claire through Facebook, and I do watch her programs, and they have rosary and benediction through Holy Faith Media. Oh, good. Sister Susan Summers, they use off in the book from Father Gobi, The Marian Movement of Priests. I also have that book. I think he had quite a few books. I think I have all of his books, Father Gobi's. Fugue says, thank you, Mr. Tapley. Bruce Steele says, she has been reading John 14. That is a good book, isn't it, Sister Susan? John 14, sure, well. If it's in the Bible. Karen Herrera says, that's why I made the comment the other day when I said they have no shame. Oh, okay. Bruce Deal, Deal says, Father Gobi, I mean. <clears throat> Sister Renee says, yes, Bruce, the Father Gobi book is wonderful. I have it. To the Blessed Mother specifically told him not to be under a bishop because the bishop would strip his mission. Man, how true that is. Catholic Crusader says, I must go now, Father. Duty calls, <laughs> okay. Playtime with my sons, no problem. Super class, Professor T. Have a blessed Saturday night, my remnant. Wear your brown scapulars even when you sleep. Talk to you soon. Well, thank you, Catholic Crusader, for being in class today. And uh, do you have a slip to leave early, by the way? I just, you know, just want to check, make sure that we go through the right, proper procedures here. Argyle says, oh, you haven't been here quite a while, Argyle. Mr. Tapley, you and I should not quit our day jobs. <laughs> Sorry about that. I already quit my day job long ago. I retired in 2001, so you're about 18 years too late. I've been retired almost as long as I worked. I worked for 26 years, and I'm re retired for 18. My goal is to be retired as long as I worked. Bruce Deal says, thank you, Sister. I will try to get a copy of it. Sister Renee says, at one point in time, there was a whole apostolate of Father Gobi, priests. I don't know what ever happened to any of them. I think you're right. The Marian movement of priests was quite active when Father Gobi was alive. I think I went to one of his conferences. I remember his books being all around. No, maybe not. I can't remember. I don't. I remember seeing a lot of his books. Let me see. Uh, Bruce Steele says, I heard that also, but do not know what happened. I believe he got the messages 
into the 80s. Kevin LeClerc says, I too watch Sister Mary Claire and also Sister Susan. Amen. Sister Renee says, yes, I can't remember the exact title that's somewhere in my library, but it has a blue cover. Well, I have three or four Father Gobi's books. I think it's at least into the 80s. Marian Movement of Priests. Like you say, it has a blue cover. They all do. Maybe I'll bring those in next time. Patricia says, Michael Matt said he would have an update on this site about Munich. I know it. That's what I'm wondering. Where is it? It's uh, The rally must have been over with several hours ago. So I'm anxious to see what he... He got me all interested in what they what they were going to do. He says quite a few very famous cler clerics would be at the rally. I presume priests and bishops in Germany. Uh, Sister Renee says, I have watched Sister Mary Claire in her new order. It reminds me of ours, don't you think, Sister Susan? There was another order that reminded me of yours, too. What What was that we were talking about recently? Peter Breen says, kind of interesting how John 666 is the verse describing the disciples departing from Jesus when they could not accept his teaching about the Eucharist. Yes, that is interesting. Sister Susan says, yes, Sister Renee. Sister Renee says, one of my spiritual directors is a profound visionary. Jesus once showed her a church full of people, and they all looked emaciated as if they were in a prison camp. He told her they were not being fed. She always wondered if it meant just from what the teaching was from the pulpit, or could indeed the Eucharist be lacking when it is touched by a Eucharistic minister. Yeah, I think both of those are true. I remember reading where as soon as the Eucharistic is touched by a layperson, then, then Jesus is not present any longer. When that layperson hands you the Eucharist, he's, Jesus is not in there any longer because he... It's not the same as receiving the Eucharist from the priest. I remember reading that. But and, but your dream is going to become even more true as soon as it's universal that that uh, priests have to give communion to people living in mortal sin, as they already do in Malta. Sister Renee says, one of the rules in our religious order is we never touch, we never receive from a layperson only from consecrated hands. We know that it hurts Jesus as a sacrilege. Yes, I do the same thing. Rosemary Kelly says, wow, hi, Rosemary. Sister Renee says, but has anyone ever heard anyone say, if perhaps it is true that once touched by a layperson, the Eucharist loses some of its beautiful grace if it's given to another? Yes, there's been a lot of abuses, and that's one of them. I remember reading once where the person received communion in the hand and he never he didn't put it in his mouth and of course this I'm sure is a common uh, problem and the person took it next door to the diner next door to the church and had the Eucharist with coffee <laughs> somehow I don't think that person understands the sacrament and Pope Francis says he says you should give the Eucharist to people living in mortal sin because it's medicine. And that is not correct. That is false theology. He's confusing the sacrament with a sacramental. A sacramental like holy water, that is like medicine. But the Eucharist is Jesus in person. It's, it's not medicine. And Jody says the Protestant Bibles have 66 books. Should we even read them? Well, the Protestant Bible is not as good as the Douay Reims, for the most part. Once in a great while, I I've, I read all. I read quite a few different translations. Whenever I study for a program or when I'm doing interpretation, I go to the Bible Hub website and they they have 10 or 12 different translations. And I check them all out. <clears throat> Ninety percent of the time, Saint Jerome got it right. Sister Ray says, not a lay person. Not, oh, not a late person, but a lay person. Of course, we never receive Eucharist from a Eucharistic minister as part of our rule. Kevin says, good night, and thank you all, WFRN. Amen. 
Rosemary Kelly says, so many do not even believe in the real presence of our Lord in the Eucharist. Hence the irreverence in the handling of our Lord. That's the problem. Our guy says, I miss you guys and will return on a regular basis when I can. Much love for all. Well, thanks for joining us again tonight, Argyle. We're glad you're here. And it's past six, so I think we can say that we have uh, completed our program. We could also, since it's six o'clock, we could pray the angels. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now to the hour of our death, amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, Rosemary says, the 66 books of the Protestant Bible are all in the Catholic Bible, so we don't need their Bible. Ours has it all. I agree, 100%. Sister Susan Summer says, blessings, Argyle. Sister Renee says, William, I went to Rome with my manuscript to see the Pope to start this apostolate in 2001. And I started on mission the same year. Oh, yeah, well, it could be divine providence. That's what, the year I retired. I didn't really start my mission then, but in a way I did because I started I started listening to WWCR at the same time. I had a lot of time, and WWCR is a Christian radio station. They did have a lot on prophecy. And, and that's how I got started because they had, uh, what's that guy's name? Saturday night. Anyway, he, he gave an interpretation of the book of Esther, which I knew was totally false. So that's what got me started. I said, gee, I'm going to have to look and see because I know that's not right. Oh, Tex, Tex Myers. And then I got on, went on WWCR, and they gave me a program right after him, Saturday night. That was a lot of work because every week I would do Coming, come out with a half-hour program? That was not easy. When it cost me $100, I think $100 a week. Maybe it was 100 a month. I can't remember. It was quite a while ago. But I did not make enough money to pay for that. But they, they did give me a good time slot. But this is so far superior to shortwave radio. Although I will say shortwave radio also went around the world, but not nearly as clear as YouTube. Sister Susan Summer says, God bless all. Sister Renee says, Good night, sister. I hope you make it to Mass tomorrow. It looks pretty bad out here with the snow blowing. Yeah, we've got a doozy of a storm right now, too. Does anyone know where the term doozy comes from? It comes from Duesenberg, which I believe was made in New York State. Okay, everybody, God bless everybody, and uh, maybe I will see you in two hours at Sam's program, the live rosary on Piata Rosary, and then tomorrow morning, bright and early, 10 a.m. for a live, ro live rosary immediately after Mass. But no, ma uh, no Mary School of Prophecy tomorrow. I take off Sunday afternoon, and I will be back Monday, and we will talk more about World War III and Armageddon. So in the meantime, God bless all of you. And may all of you have a very blessed day. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 